Hello adventurers! Today, Wok Hei and I will be ranking 23 Singapore tourist attractions to bring you the ultimate tier list for tourists coming to Singapore. After living in Singapore for 16 years, I know where are all the good places to visit. How about you, Wok Hei? What unique perspective are you bringing to the table? Maybe a paw? Give me a paw. Good boy! Let's begin! Number one, the only place in Singapore that you can take an actual roller coaster that make you go Whoa! It's the Universal Studios Singapore. From the eight times that I've been there, my top three rides are the Revenge of the Mummy and the Human and Cylon from the Battlestar Galacticus. In one of my visits, I even rode each of them ten times. So if you have any heart problems, you must avoid these three rides. One of the huge downsides of USS is the super long queues, especially when it's very crowded. Therefore, if you do plan to visit, aim for weekdays. The whole theme park is also very well decorated. I really like the vibe and the theme in each of the zones. Each shop sells merch that fits the zone theme. So for all that, the USS gets a B tier. Okay, do you like roller coasters? Your height too short for a roller coaster. It's okay, you get daddy coaster, okay? Woohoo! Number two, the most famous shopping street in Singapore, Orchard Road. This is where actually many of us locals bring our date to go on a walk. The streets are very wide and all the shopping malls around are actually very fun for window shopping. However, unless your primary objective in Singapore is to do shopping, I don't really recommend. You can easily find all of these shopping brands in any other city and it's not like it's cheaper if you buy it here in Singapore. The one time that I will recommend coming to Orchard Road is Christmas time because this is when they will decorate the whole place very very grandly. Each of the shopping malls will build their own rendition of Christmas tree and my friends and I will every year come here to rate their Christmas trees. But for the lack of uniquely Singapore flavour, I will rank the Orchard Road as a C tier. And number 3, easily the most gorgeous shopping mall that I've ever visited. The Jewel at Changi Airport. Which other shopping mall has a huge waterfall right in the centre with greenery surrounding it? There are also family-friendly activities like garden and mirror maze and even a bouncing net which are not the most affordable but even if you are not spending a single cent, the amount of things that you can still see and do is still worth the visit. The best way to explore Jewel is to utilize the early check-in and spend the 2-3 to three hours before your flight to explore Jewel and the surrounding airport terminals. So you don't have to make a special trip, you just explore Jewel on your way out of the country. For all that, the Jewel gets a B tier for me. No, 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 daddy. This is a C. Why? Why is this a C? Dogs are not allowed. There, there. It's okay, okay. We have Jewel at home. Number four is where you get to experience the underwater world without having to swim or dive. The Sea Aquarium. For about $40 per adult, it's really quite epic to be able to witness the ocean going about their day in front of you. The last time I was there, they actually turned this place into a restaurant so you get to dine with the actual sea view. However, I feel that you can't really say that this is special to Singapore. Think about it, if I show you this picture, can you really say that, oh, this is taken in Singapore? So that makes the Sea Aquarium a B-tier destination for me. Number five, the highest point in Singapore, Bukit Timah Summit. At a whopping 164 meters, we can't even call it a mountain. It takes less than an hour to climb all the way to the top. And when you reach the summit, there's no view. There's just trees everywhere. Some may argue that, oh, but this is a very good hotspot for spotting wild animals. But it takes a lot of luck to spot any animals. At most, you'll see trails of ants. It's a very unrewarding hike, especially for tourists who will only be in Singapore for a limited amount of time. So I do not recommend, and I'm putting this as the D tier. At number six, you can walk above the tree lines. The treetop walk at McRitchie Reservoir. On this 25 meters high suspension bridge, you also get a good glimpse of the city from above. It's quite cool, but to get all the way here, you need to hike for about one and a half hours. And after the treetop walk, you need to hike all the way back, which makes this a three to four hour hiking trip, almost half of your day gone. If you really want to see some nature in Singapore, I recommend the southern side of the McRitchie Reservoir. There are some nice boardwalks over there. About a treetop walk for so much effort and so little reward, Again, I also don't recommend and I'm putting this also at the D tier. Okay. 
Number seven is where you can find the best zoos in Asia, Mandai Wildlife Reserve. By now you can tell that nature areas isn't really our strong suit. So we try to make it up by building the very best zoos. There are a total of four zoos in Mandai with the fifth one coming in 2025. The first one is the Singapore Zoo, which is like our flagship zoo. You can find a lot of animals from all over the world. My favorite thing to do here is feeding the giraffe and looking at the apes exhibitions. Oh, I have friends living in the zoo. You have friends? Do you mean the African painted dogs? I think your friends will eat you alive, okay? And there's also the bird paradise, which will make all the bird lovers go crazy because there are so many walk-in aviaries where you can meet the birds in close person. I also love the feeding sessions at the bird paradise because I get to play with the birds and view them very, very closely. And there's also the river wonders. It's my least favorite, but it's still pretty cool because I get to see a lot of aquatic animals from all over the world. And the night safari, where you can roam the jungle and see night animals without fearing for your life. For the variety and the quality of all the exhibitions, despite the smaller size compared to other zoos in other countries, this is the best zoo package that I've ever experienced. So the Mandar Wala Reserve gets an S tier. If you're short on time but still want to visit the most of Mandai Wala Reserve, I recommend doing just one day of Singapore Zoo followed by River Wonders then Night Safari. The zoos are so good, I think it will be such a waste if you rush through them. Number 8, we have one of the most cultural area in Singapore, Kampong Glam. The highlight of this area is the Masjid Sultan which has stood here for over 200 years. What makes this area so lively are the surrounding streets that are full of lively murals and fun looking shops. Definitely you must check out the Muscat Street and the Haji Lane. You can easily have fun sightseeing for 2-3 to three hours in this area without having to spend a single dollar, which makes Kampong Glam an A tier destination for me. At number 9, we have one of the best high viewpoints of the city, the Singapore Flyer. Enjoy unblocked view of the city as the Ferris wheel brings you up above the skyline. However, it's about $40 for that 30 minutes ride, of which only half the time you will be at the scenic height. If you ask me, I'd rather spend the money on one of the rooftop bar around Marina Bay area because then I could sit there for longer and enjoy the view, even have a meal. So the Singapore Fire gets a C tier. Number 10 is Singapore's most historical hawker center, Lao Pasat. The name Lao Pasat actually means old market, but it actually looks very new now because it's recently renovated. The building is very nice and they sell a lot of local food here. But personally, I feel that Lao Pasat is too posh to feel like it's a hawker center. I still prefer other hawker centers such as a Maxwell Food Center. So I'll give this a B tier. Number 11 is where you can see the perfect depiction of Singapore as a garden city, Gardens Butter Bay. The highlight here is the flower dome where you can view a huge collection of plants from all over the world, the cloud forest where you can see plants from a highland tropical forest, and there are also tall observatories if you want to see the city from a high point. Unfortunately, it's not the most affordable. It costs you about $60 to visit the cloud forest and the flower dome, and an additional $15 if you want to go up to the observatory. You can argue that all these are man-made and not natural, so not as nice. But I beg to differ because I feel that all these are very well made and are very beautiful to enjoy and relax in. Even if you're not planning to spend here, there's a free musical light show that runs every night that you can enjoy. All these giant super trees will become giant disco trees. So you can still have a great time even if you're not planning to spend. For all that, the GBTB gets an S tier. By the way, if you want to save some money on your ticket, I have a discount code that you can use when buying tickets via Klook. I'll put them in the description below. I'll also be getting commission from your purchase, which helps me feed Wok Hei and make more travel guides like this. So, thank you for your support. Number 12 is the budget-friendly version to see the garden city, but just as beautiful, the Singapore Botanical Gardens. My favorite area here is the National Orchid Garden, which is like the smaller version of Flower Dome, except it focuses a lot more on orchids. There's also a glass house inside, which is like the mini cloud forest. The orchid garden is $15 per adult, but the rest of the garden is actually free to roam and explore. I also love this stretch where you can see these alien-looking flowers, the Heliconia Walk. 
I recommend spending one to two hours just walking around and taking in the beauty of the garden, which is easily an A tier thing to do. Yes, also A tier for me because this park is dog friendly. Yes, okay. It's dog friendly, friendly for you. At number 13, we have the grandest shopping mall hotel casino in Singapore, Marina Bay Sands. You can find many luxury brands in this mall and there's even a whole river running through the center. There's also three whole towers of five-star hotels with a cruise ship on top. You can't really ask for much more. However, despite all this grandeur, this is only a B tier for me. Because firstly, I still think it's very boring to come to Singapore to shop or to gamble. I mean, you can spend one night in this five-star hotel, which will cost you about $800 per night. The saving grace here is the free water and light show that runs every night. And for the fact that MBS is right smack in the middle of town, which is very near to a lot of other tourist attractions. So just drop by one night after your activities and enjoy the free water and light show. So the MBS gets a B tier. Wokhe is getting restless and tired at the moment, so I will let him go out and play and rest. Bye friends, see you later. Okay, go. Number 14 is where art and science meet and play together. Art Science Museum. The brightest highlight here is the Crystal Universe exhibit where you can walk through an infinity corridor full of LED lights. These lights are heavily programmable, very interesting, will definitely light up your day. Children will also infinitely love this place. You get to draw your own animal and after you scan it, it will start swimming in the main digital light canvas. The Art Science Museum is right below the MBS. It's this peeled onion looking building. So it's very easy to also just make this as an on the way itinerary. However, it's also not the most affordable. It costs about $30 per adult or $85 for two adults and two children. Honestly, if you're bringing children as a family vacation, this will be an A tier. But for a normal group of adults, I think this is at most a C tier for me. Number 15 is where you can find the most iconic figure in Singapore, the Merlion Park. This is also the perfect location to see the Singapore skyline. You can also see the Esplanade, the Singapore Flyer, the MBS Art Science Museum, and the magnificent skyscrapers that mix up the CBD. You can view all of this for free. I love this place so much, I actually took my wedding photo here. Really, you cannot visit Singapore without witnessing this view of the city. So, the Merlion Park is a solid A tier for me. Number 16 is the durian shaped building, the Esplanade. It's actually an award-winning building and a bustling arts center. There are arts performances that run daily at the Esplanade, some of which are free to enjoy. However, I don't know if I will recommend tourists to come to Singapore for arts. Personally, I like the Esplanade for a building, not really for the performances. It's a C tier for me. At number 17, we have the most bizarre tourist attraction in Singapore, Hopar Villa. This is a very interesting place where you can easily spend one to two hours looking at very unique dioramas of Chinese mythology. The most interesting for me is the Health Museum because this is where you can witness the graphical depiction of what are the punishments in hell for each of the crimes that you can commit. Each of the exhibits actually represents ancient Chinese folklore that tries to teach traditional values such as filial piety, loyalty, acts of service. If you have children that you want to straighten up, this might be a good place to bring them to. The entry ticket is $10 per adult and $5 per children. I think this makes Ho Par Villa a solid B tier. Number 18, the Science Center. It's quite fun to learn about scientific concepts from all the cool contraptions that they have here. The coolest one that I remember is the Tesla coil. However, in my recent visits, it's been under renovation. Uh, good morning. I'm calling in to check is the Tesla coil exhibition operational today? Uh, Tesla coil is in the Have a good day. There's also a very cool exhibit called Earth Alive where you can sit in an earthquake simulation. It was very cool and scary to feel how the tremors slowly progress into intense shaking as the Richter scale increases. But after visiting science centers in other countries, I have to admit that ours in Singapore is just slightly above average. To make it worse, our science center is all the way to the west of the island, far away from all the other tourist attractions. So if you want to visit, you really have to make a trip here. 
Therefore, for a tourist, I would think this is a C tier destination. Number 19 is another place where I took my wedding photo. The Fort Canning Park. This is a beautiful green space that's right smack in the middle of the city. The most popular spot here is the tree tunnel view, where many couples, including myself, take very dramatic wedding photos. The park, as the name suggests, used to be part of a military fortifications. You can actually take a look at the underground bunker by joining the Battle Box tour, which is about $20 per person. I joined the tour before. It was pretty cool to go into the colonial bunker and see what life was like down there. You also get to learn what happened to Singapore in the 1940s. So Fort Canning gets a B tier. And number 20, the coolest museum in Singapore, Lee Kong Chen Natural History Museum. The biggest highlight for me here are the dinosaur fossils and the walls of animal specimens. Recently, I got very interested in insects, so just imagine this wall was a huge treat for me. However, the museum is not really in a very good location for tourists. So although it's really cool to see all these high quality specimens, it will be very inconvenient to get here. So I think it's a C tier destination. And number 21, this is where you can experience what life is like as a local. Chinatown. There are so many unique local sites in the area. For example, the Buddha Tooth Relic Temple, the Singapore City Gallery. The whole area is also full of local food options. Just visit Maxwell Food Center and you'll get a gajillion local food stores to choose from. During Chinese festive period, the whole street also comes alive because they are always decorated to match the vibe. Every Lunar New Year, the whole street will be decorated with light figurines of the Chinese zodiac animals. So it's always a novelty that's worth another visit. The best part is, all of these experiences can be enjoyed for free. Just avoid some of the more touristy area, such as the Chinatown street market. Other than that, most things are very affordable. So Chinatown is definitely an S tier destination that you cannot miss a visit. At number 22, we have another very vibrant neighborhood in Singapore, Little India. Come here for a lot of local food options, especially Tekka Center. You have to come here very hungry, otherwise you will leave very unsatisfied because you see all this food that you want to try but you cannot. There is also a local Hindu temple that you can visit to experience a little bit of Hindu culture. To finish off, you can browse the largest Indian department store in Singapore, the Mustafa Center. What's so cool about Mustafa Center is the variety of home items that you can find here, especially those that are essential to an Indian household. My favorite buy here was this Tosai dough that I bought for $3, but I could cook like 12 Tosai from it, and it was very nice. So for the very unique and affordable experiences that you can get here, Little India gets an A tier. Number 23, it's Singapore's very own water park, the Adventure Cove. It's complete with big water slides and a huge wave pool. My favorite attraction here is the Rainbow Reef. This is where you get to snorkel in their in-house saltwater aquarium. Overall, it's quite a fun place to have a fun day out with your family and friends, but it's quite pricey at $40 per ticket. If you're looking to explore Singapore, I wouldn't really recommend Adventure Cove as the place to go. Comparative to other water parks in other countries, for example, our neighboring Malaysia, the Sunway Lagoon, the Adventure Cove is painfully tiny. So for a water adventure, I wouldn't recommend coming to Singapore. And that puts the Adventure Cove as a C tier destination. So do you agree with my tier list? Let me know in the comments which ranking you think I got wrong. Now, let me take you to the top 18 places to visit in Singapore. I'll see you there.